Hello everyone, it's Amy, and I am here for week 11 of Build Your Stash and Craft. And it this week it's going to be watercolor papers, and we can use that to make cards, we can use it to make all sorts of things. So I have my markers here, and some cardstock, and two sheets of plastic, which were some little um, envelope closures that I got at the Dollar Tree. And this is just so easy and fun to play with. You just choose a couple of colors. I'm going to do three. I'm going to do red, orange, and yellow. Um, choose colors that go together. And then all you do, so simply, is just put some color on the page. And I just like to mix it up. And the reason that we have two pieces of plastic is once we're done with this, we're going to put some water on it. And then we'll put the plastic together because if you were to just put water on it and then put your paper on, you would see all of these line marks. So um, in order to get rid of those, you squish the two pieces of plastic together and they get rid of those line marks. Oops, dropped the lid to that one. And you want to get your colors kind of close together or otherwise... Um, you'll have white spots on your paper. So I'm just going to kind of make this about as big as my paper is, which is just a eight and a half by 11. Get some in there. I think I've got it all. I always check my markers to see if I got any other color on it. And if I do, I get rid of that right away. I'm just color it off on a piece of paper because I don't want that red on my yellow permanently. Now you can use a spray bottle and just spray it and get a good amount of water on there. And then take your other piece of plastic and just kind of squish it around. And that will get rid of your line marks for you and give you some really cool texture. Then peel it off. Take a piece of your cardstock and just lay it flat and rub it around. It's almost like using a jelly plate, a little bit different. And this will give you a really pretty watercolor effect. And lift that off. Oh, and that just really looks pretty. Now I, I'm missing a little something here, and I have a little extra on my page, so I'm going to just kind of go in there and pick up a little color in that area and then on this end I don't have a lot either so I'm going to just put that end on there and I know that I have I need a lot on that end so I'm going to just pick up all that's left and then you'll want to have one of your paper towels just to wipe this off and there we go that page looks pretty good then you have your other sheet it's a two for one because there's that sheet. I'm still kind of wanting some color in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick up some of this color. I don't want to be unhappy with my paper when I'm done just so I can get another whole sheet. I'm going to use this to fill in my papers. And I look, I could put it on top, but then you're just going to kind of get a mash. I don't want to lose this beautiful kind of marbling here. I just want to put color where my paper is just too white for me. If you just put it on top, the parts that are white might still come up white. And the parts that you thought were so pretty could kind of just get so, so heavy that you lose the, the beauty of it. And I still want something on this spot right here. And isn't this gorgeous? You're just making your own paper. You can use this for scrap there. Now I'm happy with that. I really like the way that that looks. Now I will take another piece, and you could also take some of your scrap paper. Let's see, do I have some here? No. Um, oh, here. You can just take some of your, this is an, an envelope that I kept, a security envelope, and I can pick up some of that color on here. Let's see what that looks like with that. Ooh, that does look pretty. So we'll just take this and grab up that color. 
And this would make a really kind of cool flower because you've also got that texture in the background. I'm starting to get dry here, so I better hurry up. Okay, I think I've got everything that I'm going to get. Alrighty, and then you can just take a paper towel and just give it a little spray and wipe it off because if I'm going to do like, I'm going to do blue and purple next. Well, that blue and purple mixed with the orange, red, and yellow will turn to a muddy color. And I don't want that on my paper, so just go through and give it a wipe. And the other one we got really quite clean, but I'm going to give that a wipe too. And there we go. So we have one piece down. Let's do one more. And then I'll upload this, and um, then I will come back and show you some different card shapes and some different things that you can do to put on your cards. I'm putting a little more blue on this one because this one I'm only going to do blue and purple no other colors you could do red with blue and purple you wouldn't want to do orange and you wouldn't want to do yellow because yellow and purple make brown well not really brown but they make a not nice color really and if you just look at your color wheel your main colors are red and yellow in blue. So if you just look at that and um, you can look up a color wheel online and it will show you how to mix colors and which colors go together and which ones don't. Okay so this one I'm going to just I have a bowl of water I'm going to put my hands in here and I'm just going to drip some spots. I don't want to get a lot of water in any specific space I kind of want to get it all over so that when we put our two together we get a nice mix of color. Let's see how this works. Take our other piece, put it on top, and just kind of rub it around. And I kind of go in a bit of a circular motion because I think it moves those lines, but I don't know that you need to. It's just the way I do it. And then let's peel that off. Ooh, that looks really pretty. Grab another piece of cardstock, put it on there and just smooth it on. If you get it on the back, it's no big deal. As a matter of fact, sometimes I take them and I actually just flip them over. Oh, look at that. This is a little solid, but that is gorgeous. So I'm going to pick up some color in this area, in this area, and a little across the top here, and then this whole corner I didn't get any. Big white spot there. And I think I want to see if I can get a little bit of dots down in this corner. There we go. And I like that. And then what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to set that aside for a second even though it's still got a lot of ink on it because I want to get this while it's still wet. I'm going to do the opposite side of this one so that I have double-sided paper. So see, you can make your own single-sided paper, you can make your own double-sided paper. And then what I do after I make my card bases is I stick them under heavy books with some parchment paper on each side. Ooh, look at that side. That's the coolest thing is that you never know what you're going to get. But, yeah, so I just make my card bases and stick them under between parchment paper in the pages of a really heavy book. And, um, and let them sit for a little while to flatten them out. Maybe a little bit. 
it over here. I do like to try and make sure that I go to the edges if I'm if I know I'm going to make cards because I'm going to use it all the way to the edge if I'm making flowers. It's not that big of a deal. There, I think that that looks really good too. And then I'm going to try, let's see. Let's spray that a bit. I'm going to try and pick up some of this and see what we get. Not too much. Let's try this one. It has quite a bit of paint on it, but er, not paint, but marker. And this is why you had to have the watercolor markers because a permanent marker would not move like this. Although a permanent marker will move if you use rubbing alcohol because permanent markers are alcohol based and that's why the alcohol will move them. Uh, watercolor markers and washable markers are water based and that's why the water moves them. And there, we've got some pretty color just on this extra piece of paper and being that it's a nice thin piece of paper, it will make a nice flower. There we go. So alrighty, I'm gonna stop right here and I am going to clean off my little sheets and then I will come back, I'll make some more and come back and I will show you how to make some, um, a bunch of different card base shapes and then we'll make one card. So thank you very much and um, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I'm gonna show you how to do some different type of card folds. And um, one thing I wanted to show you, these were my test ones where I did it I did orange and yellow with spray and then I did it with a sprinkle um, just to make sure that they would work before I showed you. But the one thing I wanted to show you was this is what happens when you don't um, put your two pieces of plastic together. I had just done this and you know I put my marker on there, sprayed it, and it, this is how it turned out. So that's why we need the two pieces of plastic so that we come out with these lovely colors. So I wanted to show you that. Now I'm going to show you some different card folds. The only thing I did was I cut all of my papers in half because that's the size cards we're going to make. And we'll start with the easiest ones. Um, the first one, you just fold your card in half. And that makes a pretty card. But then you simply, to make it even more interesting, fold we've got our two halves here we're just going to fold our top half back like this right to the back edge and this is our card this is our card base so now the nice thing about this and you want to get a nice good um you want to get nice good folds the nice thing is is that when they open this card up and they want to stand it up it stands up like this and it just looks very interesting and what you can do is you can take take something and attach it by just gluing half of it and attach it to your card like this so it looks like it's in the middle but then the card opens up and it's actually just on that front flap so that's that's the way of decorating this type of card and then you can put your sentiment on the inside here or here um, or if you do something like this you can put a sentiment up here you can do it however you want to but that's number one number two again fold it in half and get a nice good crease on there and then fold it in half to the inside right to that center and I just like to stand this up and make sure I slide my top piece right up against there give it a nice good press there and then this is an easel card so this card is going to stand up like this and what you'll do is you'll take a piece of something let's see what do we have here You'd take something like this flower, which is actually too big, you'd want a smaller one, like maybe the size of the center, and you would glue that here so that when they open up the card, they can take the card 
and it will sit behind that little whatever you put there. And you can put anything. You could put a sentiment there. Whatever you do put there, you want it to be raised up just a little bit so that when they open up the card, the card will slide and it will touch right there and then it will stand up. And then you can put things on the front of the card like this and just again attach them only here. So this would look really pretty on there. But then when they stood it up, it would look like this. And then maybe have a little happy birthday right here um, with that standing up like that. So that's fold number two. Okay, for fold number three, we are going to, this is eight and a half by 11 cards, so we know it's eight and a half. So the center is going to be four. I'm just going to take a pencil. The center is going to be four and a quarter. So four and a quarter is right here. And then I'm going to go to the other side. and a quarter is right here okay so now you know where your center is and these marks are hard to see because um, you want to be able to erase them so I made them light and then all you do is you fold your card into the center this way and then go turn it around and fold it into the center this way just like that. Now the reason you didn't want to fold that in half is because you wouldn't want to fold in the middle of that back part. That's why you mark it. Okay, so there's number three. And then you can put something on there again, like this, only attach it on one side and put it like this so that when they open the card, the card will still open and that will be on there like that. So that's number three. Number four, what I do is I just, want to mark this in thirds, which I should have figured that measurement out before I started. Let's see, eight and a half. If we do it at two and a half, that'd be two, four, six, that would be seven and a half. So I want to mark it at two, two and a half. If I do another quarter, that would be three quarters. I'm going to mark it at two and one, two, three, four, five, six, right about seven eighths, two and seven eighths. And eight and a half is not exactly divisible by three. So I'm going to mark it there. I'm going to fold it to those marks. And then I'm going to turn it over and fold it so that I have like a Z. There we go. And so now I have this shape. So fold it one way and then fold it the other. And then what you do is you take your card, you, you leave the back one whole, so you're gonna start at this fold, and then you're gonna come down I'm going to come down to two and a half, let's say. You can do it wherever you want to. This is not a measurement that has to be the same. But so I'm going to mark, I'm going to go from two and a half right up to this fold, which this fold is right here. So I'm going to go there and there. And I'm going to draw a line. And then I'm just going to cut that off if I can reach my scissors. There we go. And I cut just inside that line because I do not want that mark on my card. And there we go. Now, 
I need to fold it back the other way because I want the back one, then the middle one, then the front one. And now you have this shape. So when it stands up, it stands up like that. And it's hard to kind of get the look, but you can put like a flower or something on the front, put like a happy birthday here or something, and then put your message on the inside. So that's number four. Number five is you can do like I did with the die cutting machine. I took a piece of, um, just a piece of sale ad and folded it in half the size that half of my card would be. So fold your card in half. Just like that. Sorry about the noise. That's Papa. He just got out of bed. So I'm going to have to hurry. So what I did was I folded it in half so that it was the size of my card. And then I folded that in half again. And I just drew a half of a butterfly so that both sides would be the same. Then I cut around that. And I just put it on my card base. And then I just drew around the butterfly. Leaving this fold at the top. You have to remember to leave that fold when you're drawing your butterfly. You draw your body, you draw your body, and then you draw your wing up to the fold and stop, and then come over about an inch and start drawing your top wing again, and then draw all the way around so that that fold is still connected at the top. So you just put it here, draw around it, cut it out, and you wind up with a butterfly that looks like this, a card that looks like this. And then you can go in and draw your details on your butterfly and color it up with your the colored markers that you have um, or you can paint on it or do whatever you'd like to do doodle on it so that we have that card and I'm gonna stop right here because I have to go get Papa up and get him his breakfast and everything and I will be back okay and I'm back to show you the final shape well I guess the final two shapes here we go this is one just a plain old card base and those work really well for lots of things and then the last one that's a real shaped card is I just took a bowl and I put it on my paper and I drew around it now for this card you will need a whole the whole sheet of paper so um, once you get your circle cut out voila that was magic you just take it and you fold it in half like this give it a really good fold and then you'll need to cut out another circle. So I just, because I had folded this one to show you how to do the butterfly, um, I just took one of my sample pieces and I just cut a circle out of there with the same bowl. And then what you do is you take this and you put it on the front half of your circle. And we'll just do that really quick. Just using a little bit of our stick glue here. Um, I would normally probably put a little bit of wet glue on there. And then you're going to take that and just line it up with your circle all the way around. Check it on both sides. There we go, that's lined up well. And give it a really good press. Just pressing those two together. So this is what we have. We have our half circle with our full circle glued onto the front. And that full circle on the front is so that you can, you know, put decoration on there, you can put sentiment on there. When you open it up, you can put your your actual written sentiment on the inside and then this is what you call a rocker card and this one sets up like this and it will rock my paper's a little bit bendy and everything so but it's just another cute way to make a card and um, you decorate it however you want to so I'm gonna stop right here for a minute and then I will be back with our 
final part, which is we will make one of these cards into a card, a full card. Okay, I am back, and I thought that since I had to stop and feed Papa breakfast that I would make some cards before I came back. I did not get these two finished, so but these are our card bases like this. And um, But I did doodle on my butterfly, so I have that card ready to go. And then I have the easel card, and I put that pretty flower on there that I made a while back. And then I stood it up with just a little heart. It says, have an outstanding day. And on that, I just folded some cardstock together and glued it together and then just put that on there to lift it up so that it would be enough that when someone opened the card that it would stay standing up like that and what they would see in the front would be this. And then I made a flower to put on the rocker card with one of the gems we did last week and so that one is just like that now this one um, still needs quite a bit of it needs something on it still but none of them are finished but I just thought I'd show you some of the things and then this is the uh, gatefold card that opens in the middle and so this one opens like this so in the way that I did that was we had our two halves so what I did was I just, let me see here, I got my parts and pieces here. Um, I just took a piece of paper and cut out a heart. And then I drew a heart in the middle of it. And then cut that out. And then I cut out just a little bit more. Here's the heart that I cut, drew in the middle. Okay, so I cut out the big heart, then I cut out the little heart, and then I cut out just a sliver so that the two of them would have space between them. They wouldn't fit together as well if they didn't have the space, plus it's nice to see behind there. And um, so then I wound up with my outside template and my inside template, and this was just an extra piece. And then I drew this on my cardstock, and I cut around the big heart and then I cut on the inside of the big heart with my razor knife because there was no other way to get in there without I wouldn't want to ruin this piece and once I had this cut out then I just cut around my little heart so that's how I did that one and I think that that one turned out really cute I love the way that that opens like that and fits together and then the last one that I have, I was watching Jen Evers, and she made wobblers. And they are so cool. I have some wobblers from the store, but they're not cheap. And um, Jen's work just as well. So this is just the card base that I folded directly in half. I stamped on the back. I, my, I had too much paint on my stamp, and this is one of our foam stamps that we made. And so I just turned it over and put the paint on my stamp and then stamped off and then stamped on here because I didn't want it that dark. Um, so anyways, and then all I did was I just drew around my flowers. I have two left here. I just thought I'd show you quick how I did that. I just started in the middle of my flower, and then I just went out around the edge and kind of swooped up at the top. And so I just did it like that. Just start in the middle and give it a little pointy at the top. Oops, I actually have two of them left here that still need to be done. And that just gives it a little bit more dimension. Um, I did it in red. You could do it in any color that you want to. The red shows up a little bit on the orange and the red. The orange blends in too much. And I thought that black was just too, um, too stark. So anyway, so I made my the back of my base. And I'm going to show you how to do the wobblers. And we are going to put a couple of dragonflies on the front of our card. This is so simple. All you need is two strips of paper about a quarter of an inch wide. Um, these are about four inches long. And this is the wobbler that I made after watching Jen. And it's just like, they just wobble. They're just so cute. So, but all you do is you take two pieces of paper. This is an uh, envelope. I painted it orange because you'll see it a little bit under the dragonflies because they're so skinny. Um, if it was something that was bigger than that, like the flower here, you know, you really don't see the wobble unless you really look underneath. All you do is you take 
two strips of paper about four inches long, quarter of an inch wide, and put them together in the shape of an L. Okay, you just push that together. And then all you're going to do is this one is on the top, so you're going to take the one on the bottom and try and keep them square. And so you take the one on the bottom, fold it over the one on the top, and that's all you do the whole time is you just continue folding, fold it over, and make sure that you try and keep your line straight. So you're going to go over and then up, over and then down. And you're just going to keep doing this over, up, over, down, and just keep doing this back and forth and back and forth until you're all the way to the end and you just have a little piece left. So, and like Jen said, she said, um, well, this is, you know, seems so simple. We did this in kindergarten, and actually, I do remember doing this in school as a little kid. But boy, I sure had forgot about it. And um, I was so happy when I saw her do it because it just, she did it with wire and everything, but this just turned out so much better. I have a little bit left. I need to get my scissors. I picked everything up, of course. And then you can't get to it. And just snip off those extra pieces and then put just a little bit of glue right here and you don't want to get too too much glue where it's going to like squeeze all out all over the place because you don't want you're going to wind up with a little accordion like this and you don't want to glue that together so just make sure you get a little bit of glue on the end there and the same when you're gluing it to your whatever you're going to make wobble so, and we'll do it one more time for the other dragonfly. Again, just make an L. Let me get that glue off my fingers a little bit. Whoops. Guess I didn't get that glue off my fingers very well. There we go. Wipe it on my pants. Okay. And then just fold it up. And then just continue one over the other just back and forth trying to keep it square if it's not perfectly square don't worry about it the first one that I made was not perfectly square and I even just I just cut these strips of paper I didn't measure them I didn't um, like draw a line to make sure that I was exactly straight I just cut two strips of paper off the end of an uh, envelope that I was saving Make sure that you do start saving things. We'll need some uh, different things next week. And you'll want some different papers to play with on your jelly plate. So don't forget to save envelopes that come in the mail and magazines. If you don't have magazines, um, see if you can get some from work or get some from a friend or your parents. Or um, sometimes even the library will give their old magazines away. Um, because magazines are a great place for colored paper and we're actually going to use well what I'm using for next week is not actually a magazine it's a sale ad uh, a coupon ad so um, but it's got color in it so there we go there's our second one and all I'm gonna do is decide how I want these on here let's say about like that And I'm going to put the wobble towards the top because we have the most weight at the top because we've got the wings and the antenna at the top. And if it's going to lean at all, we'd rather that it lean towards the tail because that would look more natural. And I'm going to put this one on here. Okay, and then we're just going to need to put them on our card. And I think what I'm actually going to do, 
going to really quickly um, turn this off and grab what we need for next week. I'm going to let those two just dry a little bit before I turn them over and attach them to my to my card. So I'll be right back. I'm back, so let's finish this up. Okay, these have set for a little bit, probably about about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to, I put a little glue on the bottom of my little wobble, give it a good press, do the same here. Now once these are dry, both on your, whatever you're gluing down and onto your card in both those spots, then you can kind of move them around and arrange them a little bit if you need to. Like on this one here, um, my flower was a little bit droopy on this side, so I just kind of like, you know, did this, and um, and then it came right straight up. So, but isn't that cool how those wobble? So anyway, so we're just going to press those in place. Oops. I don't know if you can see me. That one needs to be moved over a little bit. So it's on the card. Okay. Alrighty, so there are our little wobbles. And see, they're already wobbling a little bit. I thought that would be perfect for, you know, being that dragonflies fly. So I'm going to let those, I'm going to let them sit, but see how they wobble? <laughs> Very cool. Alrighty, for next week, we are going to need some of our cardstock. We are going to need some colored paper of some sort. I have sale ads here that have a lot of bright color to it. We're going to need googly eyes. And, of course, our paper is going to need to be torn into little strips. So we'll also need our water glue and our black marker. And I think that that will be it. And next week we are making scrap monsters. So thank you very much for stopping by this week. I hope that you all enjoyed making the watercolored paper and learning some different folds for cards. I've been watching the show Create and Craft and um, they make a lot of cards so they're always folding them differently. And so what I do is I just um, try and remember to make like a little template when I see one that I like if I like a fold. And that's where I that's where I learned these folds at. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.